Hey everybody, let's take a look at how we could create some stylized text in the Calvary Beta. So very cool program. Let's start by clicking on this T button here and we have text just as easy as that. And you could change this to whatever you want. I'll leave it at the default. I do want to center this. So now we've got it centered and I want to get rid of this Lado or, or Lotto or Mr. Roboto font. Uh, not, this, not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, I want a, a little bit thicker and maybe more interesting font here. So I'm using this Xenosphere. It's a free font. If you don't believe me, here's the place where you can get it for free at, at the font. You get the font that you want. And uh, let's go to the next step, which is to um, make sure this thing is centered um, vertically. So we centered it horizontally, but we've got this pivot point. I'm just using, using the scroll wheel to zoom in. And if I double click, it's a little bit odd kind of thing, but if you double click, you have the pivot point selected because it's light gray, but actually, you know, it kind of makes sense. It keeps you from accidentally selecting it. And if I hold on shift, I could drag this down until it snaps. And then I know that it's in the center. So scroll wheel out and spacebar left click to pan around. All right, so now I could scale in one direction or the other, X or Y. But if I hold down Alt and drag, I could scale them both magically at the same time. So there's a lot of magic in this program. It seems technical, but it's uh, behind that technical stuff is a lot of hocus pocus magic stuff. So let's go to the, the next step, which is creating outlines. And I'll make sure my text is selected. This is the outline button here, the circle. And if I click on that, it looks like our text just got thicker. And one thing that's a little bit odd is the outline. Uh, it's not odd, but for me, at least in this example, it is. The outline is on top of the text. And if I come in here to the fill and change this color here and go to the uh, shape and, and note that I'm working on the outline section, the attribute editor, not the type shape here. But if I go to the uh, width and I start increasing that, we're gonna get this action, which nobody wants that action. So what I wanna do is click and drag this down so it's below the type layer. Not here, because that's gonna parent it inside the um, type layer or underneath the type layer. So I click and drag so that little gray line was below the text. And now the type is on top, the outline is behind. And uh, if I make this bigger, you can see our text, our original text never gets obscured. And that's what we want. So I wanna do this a few more times. So I'm gonna select the type layer and click on my outline. I'll just drag this right to the bottom there. And this area starts to get really cluttered. So I'm gonna hold on Alt and double click on outline two and now we only see what I alt double clicked on in the attribute editor. So make this one bigger, that's what we wanna do. And change the fill color to cyan. I think that's okay. Maybe a little oversaturated, but I think it's all right. And uh, yeah, now I just wanna make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna click on the shape section and go to my miter limit and start to drop this down. I don't wanna to go too far down because that's gonna miter everything. I just want it to first drag it to it where it first starts to miter stuff. And uh, 1.9 is probably good for, uh, for the text that I have here. And now I'm gonna select this again, put one more, one more outline, drop it to the bottom. Alt, double click on it because I'm easily distracted by a lot of different things over there on the left in the attribute editor. This will uh, be black and I will increase the width again. Maybe something like that. Now I definitely wanna get rid of that little pointy part that is probably coming from the inside part of that V there. So miter limit again is gonna be a friend and I could go with that, that looks pretty good, or I could take it further and go with something like that. Uh, that looks pretty good too. I think what I will do, 
also is take the position, the Y position, bring that down. And then the X, move it over a little bit just to even things out. That looks a little bit better. Uh, visually, now it has a little bit better weight to it. And uh, now one more thing that I could do is um, make another thinner magenta um, outline. So what I'm going to do is select the type layer and this is the last outline I make, I swear to you. And I'm going to make this 1B for obvious reasons, which will be apparent in, uh, well, right now. So I want this to be similar to outline one, but I want it to be a little bit thinner. And uh, I alt, double click on this one. And if I go to the fill, one thing is there's no, there's no eyedropper here. So I need to go to alt, double click outline one, go to its fill and a smarter person than me would have made a swatch, but I'll live and I'm gonna press control C to copy the hex value. And then I can go alt double click on one B, go to the fill, click on this. And I'm going a little bit fast because this is getting probably a little repetitive, but I'll paste that, hit enter. Okay, so now one B should be the same color as one. And I wanna start, um, adjusting the offset here a little bit, and then I'll bring the width down. So I have a, a thin line and maybe a little bit less on the offset. And I could turn this trim on here. This might make it more interesting or it might completely ruin it. We'll find out together. And um, so now we just got some, some extra details in there can adjust the travel if you want. If you want this more at the top or more at the bottom, or if you want to see uh, much less. And um, yeah, I just want some accents here and there. And um, this is completely random, but you know, I, I think I'm pretty happy with that. If it's too distracting, I could also lower the opacity. Okay, and that's that's pretty much it for creating the outlines. And if I go back to the type, uh, we can always change this to whatever we want. You have to start typing and then press enter to see it accepted. So, and um, I just pressed undo a few times. Now in the beta, I'm having some trouble sometimes with un undoing some things don't undo correctly, but uh, it seems like it was working there. And uh, we haven't done anything procedurally. So let's let's do some procedural magic. And uh, I'm gonna click this button here because I'm not sure where the gradient is, but I could search, just type G-R-A-D, we find it, can double click on it. And now I have a gradient. And um, so what I can do is I could connect the gradient to my outlines. And this is gonna ruin all my colors, but we'll fix it later. So I click on this circle, I drag it to outline one, and I get this thing that pops up, and then this menu pops up here. And I'm sure there's a better way to do it than, than what I'm doing here, but I'm just doing it the way that I was able to figure out how. So we got a one, one B, we got it on, one on outline number two. So just mouse over that, and then this pops up, and then I don't know if we really need it on outline three, but I'll just put it there anyway. Okay, so now we've got a gradient, and this is what I was talking about, the uh, the procedural nature. Uh, we've attached this one gradient to all these shapes here, and I can make adjustments to it. So let's, let's set the blend mode to, um, uh, well, I don't know what we want to set it to. So I'm going to click on uh, normal and then I'll press down on the keyboard and I could just scroll through, uh, see if we find something interesting. And I, I really, I don't like the, uh, the direction. I don't know, maybe, maybe overlay is okay. Uh, so I want to change the direction. I also 
I'm going to uh, bring these closer together so it's a little bit more obvious uh, how this thing is working. And uh, rotation, let's go 90 degrees. And now I could make some, some adjustments here. Let's have it come down to about there. And uh, yeah, so if I don't like it, I could just turn off the gradient layer. Let me see, maybe there's a better, more obvious blend mode. This one looks pretty good plus. This one looks pretty good to screen. Now, I like, actually I like color dodge too. All right, I'll go with that and I will turn it off and on. So yeah, if, if you want, you can have it there or not have it there. It's just as easy as turning the, the eyeball on and off and everything still like I could change the text. Everything stays um, updatable, if that's a word. And the, uh, the last thing I'll do is just kind of drop in some, some abstract art into the background. So uh, let me go over here and find... All right, we got these these shapes. Um, actually, let me click all and just type in. There is a line, basic line. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for, question mark. Yeah, okay, so we got our basic line and um, we can scale it to make it bigger. And, um, Let's put it below everything because it's a background, not a foreground element. And um, actually, let's scale it so it's a little bit thicker. And with this selected, I'm going to hit the, um, the duplicator, but I want to hide the original. So if I alt click on this duplicator button, it, it makes a duplicate, but it hides the original. And um, our duplicator is way up here. Let me just drag it down so it's in a similar place. And um, actually, before I do that, I'm completely hiding it. I'll drag it down later. Uh, let me alt click on this and go to, um, we have these settings here for, um, let's see, size, count. Let's increase the count. But on Y and um, we could adjust the setting here and um, we can increase the count more and we have size X we could adjust that and um, let's let's leave it at grid and um, Let's see, we have shape position and rotation. And um, see if I can make some adjustments here to make it more interesting. So that could be now dragged below and you know there's there's a lot of a lot of different things we, we can do in here uh, circle some some different ways linear uh, I would probably stick with grid mostly for myself because I, I don't have a lot of experience with the program but um, can do some pattern offsetting and yeah so I think I'm gonna go with something like that and uh, maybe I don't want to increase the scale on one I have to hold on alt and, and drag it so I can increase it on both so that is 
basically it. Let's see if we could zoom to 100%. So you see all the, um, the detail and all its glory. And, and so that's how we can make some stylized text in the Calvary Beta.